we make about 45 million pounds of chips in a quarter. That equates to about 200 million pounds of potatoes, which is quite a few. What's interesting with M&T is, is they're a small town bank, and as we've grown, they've also grown with us. They've got the resources that you would need in order to go big, but they also have that friendly local community feel so that it makes it seem easier than it probably is. Welcome to Candidates Up Front. This series of interviews with candidates on the November 3rd general election ballot is brought to you by Berks Community Television and the League of Women Voters of Berks County. Both organizations are nonpartisan. That means we never support candidates nor political parties. Both organizations consider it their mission to provide voters with information about each election. I'm Judith Cranus, a member of the League. First, if you are not registered to vote, Go to votespa.com to register. Votespa.com is in English and in Spanish. And while you have until October 19th to register, the smart thing, do it now. And if you do not want to stand in line on Election Day, apply for a mail-in ballot. Again, go to votespa.com and do it now. When your ballot arrives, make sure you have the information you need on the candidates you'll be voting for, and watching programs like this will help to make your decision. And once you've made your decision, mail that ballot in right away. We help our Berks County Elections Office handle this election smoothly if we are timely. If you choose to go to your polling place on Election Day, polls are open from 7 in the morning until 8 at night. This year, we vote for Pennsylvania Attorney General, Auditor General, and Treasurer. We will also elect representatives to the U.S. Congress, to the Pennsylvania Senate, and the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. The League and BCTV invited all but the statewide candidates to be interviewed. Some did not reply, some declined. Those who agreed will be asked the same questions in the same order with the same time limits as others running for the same office. These interviews will be available on BCTV's webpage and YouTube channel. And if you watch the interviews of two competing candidates, you can compare their answers to make your decision on how you will vote. This interview is for Pennsylvania Senate in the 11th District. I believe we have a map. There's our map. Uh, this district pretty much is in the center of Berks County. State Senators serve a four-year term in the State Senate in Harrisburg. They initiate legislation and vote to create laws. They pass the budget, including taxes and expenditures of the state. They offer help about state government to constituents in their districts. The salary for a state senator is $88,610 per year, plus benefits and expenses. The two candidates are Judith Schwank, Democrat, and Annette Baker, Republican. This interview is with Annette Baker. She is the challenger. Welcome, Mrs. Baker. Thank you very much. Tell us, please, why do you want to be a state senator, and what are your qualifications for this position? Well, I'd like to be a state senator because I've uh, watched um, from the sidelines for a number of years, and I've decided that uh, now is the time to get involved actively. Um, I believe that I bring unique skills and knowledge to the table that uh, can help move things forward. I like to uh, try to find a way to bridge between two differing opinions, and I think that that's uh, something that would serve me well in the state senate. Um, what are the three most important things you want to be accomplish if elected? Uh, number one, I would like to see. Um, obviously, one of the main issues is uh, dealing with property tax elimination, uh, or replacing the property tax with a tax that would be able to fund our school system. Uh, the second one would be addressing our health care system in the state. Um, I believe that there are a number of areas that we could provide uh, 
improvements um, in, in health care um, and access to Pennsylvanians. And the third thing would be addressing our educational needs uh, in the state, particularly involving um, school choice, uh, allowing for uh, students and parents to pick the particular uh, schools that work best for their students. What do you think about state management of COVID-19? And do you see a greater impact on minorities and women? Yeah, it's obviously that we've had some issues here in the state when, with um, almost 70% of our COVID deaths being reported in our nursing and assisted living facilities. That's obviously a concern and something that needs to be uh, investigated to find out exactly what happened. Um, obviously, there are some disparities that we need to address and we need to look at how uh, those decisions were made and prepare better uh, to make better decisions in the future should we face another outbreak of COVID uh, in the future. There is currently no county health department in Berks County. Do we need one? And should this be paid for by state government? I think we would need to uh, address that with the county commissioners to see what, they, um, what their position is on that uh, and then be able to work with them from the state level to determine uh, if, if having a countywide uh, health office would, would be beneficial to, to Berks County. And what do you think are common sense gun violence controls the state should have in place? One of the things that I would um, continue to, uh, sorry there for a second. Uh, one of the things that I would continue to um, Encourage is using the PIXNIC system where we would um, continue to have background checks um, for gun purchases. Um, and the other component for, for me personally has been to encourage um, the idea that life is sacred. And if we can begin to cultivate a culture of life that encourages young people and uh, people that are, are uh, involved in violence um, to begin to understand that we need to um, be able to, to value in the individual that we may have a conflict with, that there's a way to resolve it without violence. And that's something that I would like to, to see encouraged and, and implemented. As a legislature, what will your role be to reduce violence in our communities? <laughs> I guess it would be, um, again, uh, encouraging a culture of life. Um, it's hard to ask um, young people not to kill each other in the streets when we don't value life um, in the womb, which I would recommend that we begin to culture, um, build a culture that will um, focus on uh, valuing all life, and that's something that I would support. Following the stent census, our state legislators will redraw district lines for state and federal officials. This has led to gerrymandering, districts that favor one party over others. Do you think this is fair to voters? And if not, what will you do to give voters fair districts? Yeah, gerrymandering has obviously been an issue um, for both parties. And I think that that's something that we need to consider when we draw new districts. I am in support of drawing um, districts according to the Pennsylvania Constitution, which require that they be contiguous and not separate municipalities um, and townships where possible. So I would strongly advocate to uh, make sure that we are following the rules in terms of um, setting up our districts and making them as uh, consistent and concise as possible. Small business is important to Berks County's economy. Will you favor additional state funds to help them survive the pandemic? I think we're available, we could definitely use uh, state funds to help our small businesses. I think what one of the best ways to help our small businesses would be to find ways to safely reopen them and begin to expand um, the ability to get back to full employment. What should be done to prevent evictions and address homelessness during the pandemic? That's an interesting and, and difficult topic because I've personally have met a number of people who have not been able to find new housing after having been evicted, um, in part because new, um, well, landlords are having a difficult time uh, 
with um, getting the funds uh, for their rental units. So it's been something that has been uh, kind of a uh, more uh, more of a concern um, that is actually forcing some people into homelessness right now. So I think what we need to look at is how do we uh, find a way to supplement or help people through this difficult period. Again, reopening businesses, allowing people to get back to work full time would help them be able to stay in their apartments or, or their rental units um, and also not put an undue burden onto landlords. What is your plan to address crumbling infrastructure in this state? I think one of the things that we could focus on is uh, looking at the um, use of our uh, tax dollars that come from our gas consumption, uh, making sure that those dollars are spent um, in uh, addressing our crum crumbling uh, bridges and, and roadways. I think that's something that we can uh, all agree is something that we need to have in place in order to make our economy run better in Pennsylvania. Will you support raising the minimum wage, and what should the minimum wage be? I would support raising the minimum wage um, as long as businesses would support it. I feel that uh, businesses are the ones that should have um, a major uh, input on what the minimum wage should be um, because they are the ones that, um, that comes out of their bottom line. And I believe that once we uh, begin to um, force uh, increases on, on businesses, sometimes it, it actually has a negative effect, like what was seen in Seattle, where a number of businesses closed because they could not afford the $15 an hour minimum wage. So min the minimum wage is actually um, best driven, I believe, by the market forces. And that's something that we can encourage businesses to uh, definitely you know, incur offer uh, wages that, that uh, are in line with what they can afford to, to pay, um, but also have that minimum so that youngsters that are starting out in business uh, or their first jobs can earn a decent salary or decent pay as well. Agriculture counts for about a half of Berks County's economy. Our local farmers are adapting as much as possible to changes in our climate. Do you think the state should do more to address climate change to protect local agriculture? And if so, what should the state do? Well, at this time, uh, with the changes in our climate, um, that is definitely something that we uh, need to be considering. It's um, been shown that even though our uh, climate is warming, um, we do have increased agricultural production, so we need to consider um, moving forward, how we're going to address some of the issues that we may face with irrigation and water supply. Um, and that's part of my background is in environmental science. I studied um, in the ecology and, and watershed management. So um, that's something that I am definitely very interested in learning more about and, and helping to provide farmers with more uh, information that will help them plan their crops and uh, production in the future. Pennsylvania has passed some bills to help root out rogue police. Would we be better off if we separated the crime-fighting functions of police from their social service functions? I think one of the concerns that um, we would see with um, the idea of uh, separating the police and having social work um, as well, uh, is that domestic violence calls are some of the most dangerous for police to respond to, as was seen in Lancaster just recently, unfortunately, uh, with a young man that uh, was shot. Um, that is a situation that had a social worker responded, um, it could have been deadly for more than, than just uh, the young man that was shot. but. Uh, potentially other people in, in the uh, community as well. Do you believe there is systemic racism in Pennsylvania? And if so, how will you help change it? Racism, wherever it is, should be rooted out. And 
exposed and sorry. Go ahead. Um, Take I'm your sorry. Time. Yeah, uh, racism. <laughs> I just I lost my thought there for a second. I wanted to say this in a concise way because I don't want anyone to misunderstand. Racism is something that should never be tolerated. We need to make sure that as a community, we embrace one another as fellow human beings. We're all part of the same human race. And that is something that I'm very passionate about, um, making sure that where I see racism, I call it out. And I believe that we need to do that as a community. We need to come together and um, support one another there should be no color. We should, we should all uh, work together because we are all part of the same human race. And where there is racism, again, it should be called out and, and dealt with forcefully. Discrimination in housing against LGBTQ people is still legal in Pennsylvania. Should we have laws to stop this discrimination? One of the difficulties with um, putting something into a law like that is it takes away the rights of homeowners uh, to be able to and and landlords to decide who to rent to, uh, who to rent to, and that is something that um, we need to address. My question, I guess, would be um, if there is discrimination going on. Again, that there are laws that are in place that should address that and should be used. Um, by those by the community um, if they feel that they are being discriminated against there are inequities in the funding of our public schools schools in rich zip codes thrive schools in poor zip codes struggle what will you do to provide every child in Pennsylvania a quality education I believe that's where um, my support of school choice comes in I believe that uh, Schools should be fully funded fairly and equitably, and that's where I would like to see a transparent funding formula that everyone understands and that is accessible uh, for people to review. Um, and I believe that parents should be able to choose where their child goes to school, um, not based on their zip code, but based on what school fits their child the best. There are in, oh, sorry, people never like taxes, yet they are necessary. In this time of increasing disparity between the well-to-do and the poor, is a flat income tax, as we have in Pennsylvania, still appropriate? Please tell us why. Yes, I believe that the flat tax is the most appropriate way to tax. Um, it's if someone is uh, industrious and able to um, earn more money, then they pay the same amount of tax on that money as someone who is not uh, or who does not make as much. And um, having a more increased taxes on those that make more money does not necessarily encourage industriousness and entrepreneurship. So I would not support increasing taxes on people that, that uh, make more money. The next budget will be very tight because of the impact of COVID-19. Where will you cut and what services do you feel are essential? That's a very difficult question. Um, there's a lot of areas that are essential, obviously, um, providing for Education and healthcare are essential uh, things that, that uh, we need to address because of the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic. Um, so I would not want to see cuts in those areas. Um, obviously, we're having issues with uh, being able to make a budget um, because of the decreased in, decreases in income right now. Um, I think one of the ways that we could address that would be trying to get people back to work. Um, because that would generate some of the tax dollars that we would need coming in. Um, as far, far as cuts go, that's something that uh, we would have to look at each individual area uh, and see if there's ways that we can trim um, 
any excess off from those off from the areas that that may have um, some uh, some extra funding from you know earlier in the year. Do you believe the fracking industry has caused environmental damage? And if you do, what dollar amount of fees or fines should be charged, and how should the monies be dispersed? Well, if there is uh, any damage um, to the environment by the fracking industry, yes, they should be held accountable if they have not followed uh, best practices and have violated any of the laws regulating their industry. Um, they definitely should, should be held accountable. Um, fracking has actually helped to reduce the cost of energy, which helps those that are under uh, around $40,000 a year, the 40% of their um, income goes to heating and fuel costs. Uh, so that is, has definitely helped those that are um, on, in that, that income bracket. Um, and that's something that uh, where they have caused any environmental damage, they should be held accountable. But uh, in general, fracking has been a, a, positive, a positive thing in Pennsylvania. Should Pennsylvania decrease the use of fossil fuels and carbon emissions? And if so, how? And what would be a reasonable time frame to do this? My position is we should always be good stewards of the earth and what we've been given in our um, environment. Obviously, where we can uh, reasonably reduce our fossil fuel consumption, we should. Um, that is something that uh, could be uh, potentially uh, done in the next few years as we see new, um, new uh, uh, tech, um, technology come on stream, um, things uh, like solar panels, things like that that have been in development that are starting to show very promising returns. Um, where we can reduce our carbon footprint, we should. Um, I am definitely in agreement that we need to find ways that are economical, that make sense, um, to replace what we can when we can in our, to help save our environment, to protect our environment. Okay, we do have a full minute left for your closing statement. Okay. Thank you very much, and thank you for, for watching. And uh, as I consider going to Harrisburg to represent Brooks County, um, I'm greatly humbled by that, that thought. And I, uh, at the same time, embrace the challenge because there's a lot that needs uh, to have a different perspective, a different um, take on how things are done in Harrisburg, um, just as a way of providing an outsider's perspective. I'm not a career politician. Um, and that is something that I think is beneficial uh, because now, uh, particularly, we have very difficult issues. And sometimes an outsider's view, um, an outsider's perspective, and being willing to think outside the box is what is beneficial in finding solutions. And I'm willing to work hard to do that. I'm willing to listen and learn and try to be that bridge between two sides to find answers to solve the problems that are facing our Commonwealth in Berks County in particular. Thank you for your time. Thank you for inviting me to be here. Thank you, Mrs. Baker. I will remind our viewers that we have a general election coming up, and that's on November 3rd. And it's a general election. We're voting for the Pennsylvania Attorney General, the Auditor General, and the Treasurer. We're also elect electing representatives to the U.S. Congress, to the Pennsylvania Senate, and the Pennsylvania House of Representatives. And this program, Candidates Up Front, has many of those candidates who will be interviewed in this series. And the programs, after you see them on BCTV, you will find them on the BCTV website and on their YouTube page. So you can watch them. You can watch two candidates running for the same office, compare their answers, and decide how you will vote. But we do hope that you will be voting. And Another reminder that if you are not yet registered, you just go to votespa.com and that will walk you through the registration process. That website is available in English and in Spanish. There's a little uh, button to click. I think it, I remember it was bright red uh, toward the upper right hand side of the screen. So you find that so you get the language you're comfortable with so you can complete your registration. Uh, it's an easy process and it's fairly quick. 
Uh, the process does require either that you have a driver's license with the number on it, and if you have that, everything's completed uh, electronically. You are automatically registered using the signature on your driver's license. If you don't have a driver's license, um, you can print out the application for the ballot and mail it to our local county courthouse. And if that printer is not available, you can fill it in online. They will ask, I think, for digits from your social security number. And then when our county elections office gets that, they mail you back a card so that they can get your signature. You return that to the courthouse and you are registered. So the point is, if you're going to do this and going to need to send it in with your social security number, you want to do that right away. That's the most effective thing is to do right away to get yourself registered to vote. Now, there are two other options you have. One is to wait till the election and go vote at your polling place. And the polls will be open on November 3rd from 7 in the morning until 8 at night. So that will work fine. That's how we're set up to go. But if you don't want to stand in line, you have the option of a mail-in ballot. And you can get your application for the mail-in ballot at votespa.com, just the same place that you registered. And I know I did that last spring when I applied. I got an email back saying they'd gotten my application and sent it on to my county office. When it arrived at the county, I got an email from the county saying they had received it. They'd be sending my ballot shortly. Before they mailed me my ballot, they sent me another email to say it was coming, so I knew to watch for it in the mail. When it got there, I did my background homework on the candidates, watching programs like this. It really helps. Or you can go to their websites, or they have Facebook pages. There's always a way to find information on the candidates. Uh, I'm sure our local newspaper will be printing some information as well. So there are plenty of places to find the information. Decide how you want to vote, mark that ballot, and mail it back to the courthouse. Now, when that happens, first of all, when the courthouse receives it, they send you another email to say, we got it, it's here, so you don't have to worry. And then when they confirm that your signature matches your signature on the books, they will send you another email saying your ballot has been certified. So it's a very easy to track system. And I think we help election services here, and they are prepared. They've handled, they've hired 10 extra people to handle the influx of ballots that they expect in this presidential year. So they are well prepared. The County Elections Board has done everything it can do to make sure this election will go smoothly. So it's very easy. All it needs is for we, the citizens, to do our part. We have this ability to vote, this right to vote. It's also a responsibility. So I urge you to make sure you're registered and make sure you vote. And thank you for watching Candidates Up Front. make about 45 million pounds of chips in a quarter. That equates to about 200 million pounds of potatoes, which is quite a few. What's interesting with M&T is, is they're a small town bank, and as we've grown, they've also grown with us. They've got the resources that you would need in order to go big, but they also have that friendly local community feel so that it makes it seem easier than it probably is.